Yes, it's a great pleasure to introduce Hiroshi Mikitani. He's the founder and CEO of, of Rakuten. And uh, perhaps it's, it's necessary to, to talk a little bit about Rakuten because uh, Rakuten is one of the top 10 internet companies in the world based on market cap. And uh, um, it's a leading e-commerce company in Japan, number one in online travel, number one in online banking, number one in online brokerage, and many more online markets. Uh, but the goal of Rakuten is to become number one in the internet, as an internet service company in the world. Therefore, Rakuten acquired uh, Buy.com. Uh, Prime Minister in, 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 in France, um, the e-book e company uh, uh, retailer Kobo, and in Germany a B2B startup uh, called Tradoria. And um, I would like to know as the first question, um, your business model is a B2B to C model. Yes. Could you please explain what that means exactly and how it will differ from from the classical models from, from Amazon or eBay? What is your special approach? Well, you know, uh, when I found the company in 1997, you know, we started with very limited amount of capital, which is about $200,000. And uh, one of the biggest difference between ourselves and that company like Amazon or eBay or others are we never raised any money from venture capital. We mm -hmm. started from 200 k I uh, went public in 2000. Uh, but so we design our business model with very ca uh, capital resources. So we try to really utilize uh, the power of the merchant uh, instead of trying to sell by ourselves. So we, our concept and philosophy is how to empower small to medium sized merchants instead of just how to abuse them as a wholesaler or something. So for example, if you participate on like, the marketplace, we empower them with you know, so many different uh, tools. Uh, we teach them how to sell products online. We give them uh, email tools. We let them build community around them. So you know, the, the uh, consumers come to our site, not, most of them not to try to buy from Rakuten, like uh, but they, you know, uh, try to buy from the merchant. So our center is not Rakuten marketplace, but uh, our core uh, is, is merchant. So there's a big difference between Amazon marketplace and our marketplace. Mm -hmm. We empower the merchants, and uh, for example, Amazon use uh, the merchant as a wholesaler. Mm -hmm. um, do you see yourself as an alternative for all merchants who are unhappy with Amazon or eBay? Well, it's definitely an alternative. Uh, in Japan, we have about 70% of Japanese users are our member. Uh, we are probably three or four times larger uh, than them. Uh, we have more product coverage. We are very price competitive. Uh, and uh, we, we do about uh, uh, $14 billion of uh, GMS per year and still growing. So the business model is uh, very different. Uh, but uh, from consumer point of view, you know, it's, it's, it's the alternative service, mm. I think. You are engaged in e-commerce, online travel, B2B, B2C, online banking, online payment, e-books, media. You have a sports team. Mm. How does all that fit together in, in, in one strategy? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, there are so many different kinds of what we call internet conglomerate uh, all over the world. But uh, the thing we are different from others are basically we really, really integrate all these services into one, maybe other than baseball. Uh, and because we only use single brand Rakuten, and we use the same ID, and we created probably the robust uh, point program called Rakuten Superpoints. So basically, we cross-sell all these service. So that is why we, are, you know, all of our service, like online retailing, online travel, online banking, we are either number one or number two in Japan. So I think uh, we created this ecosystem, uh, you know, utilizing our brand name, our membership program, and our traffic. So it's a, it's a single service, and I don't think the there is anything like that outside of Japan. Well, I think service is one of your, your key, key words in your strategy. I will give you a quote from you. Consumer service expectations for e-commerce are too low. 
Rakuten is going to change that by bringing the service standards that Japanese is famous for to global e-commerce. What does it mean? What, what is global or, 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 or bringing stand, standards from Japan to global e-commerce? What does it mean exactly? Well, you know, I think now, you know, if you think about why people buy products from internet, maybe it's about the price or it's about the convenience and efficiency. I, I, my philosophy is internet shopping is not just about the price or efficiency. It should be a fun experience. Why people like to go to small fish shop or meat butcher uh, to buy some product instead of going to the big supermarket? Because there's a communication, you enjoy the experience, and we would like to replicate that on the internet. And uh, so every single company is trying to, you know, basically uh, compete against the big players head to head. But we have a very different angle. We our concept is internet shopping is a, 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 entertainment. So we are trying to you know, create more interesting experience. And uh, we started by many companies. We bought Play.com, Price Minister, Buy.com, Tradoria here. But we believe our what we call store marketplace model is very competitive against other big players. So, now, all these uh, uh, sites have a different business model, but we are gradually integrating those services to the model. But what is the entertaining factor of buying a book online? I've seen the book, I see the price, I click, and it's delivered. So there's two different kind of things. Like, you know, for example, uh, what we call barcode items, which you can normalize, mm -hmm. and what we call non-barcode items, which is long tail. We carry about uh, 130 million SKUs. So it's extremely diversified. And you can buy almost everything, ranging from eggs to you know, uh, basically very high brand uh, fashion products. Uh, and it depends on what kind of product you're talking about. Like a pro pro product like books, it's about convenience and efficiency, and, and also the service. Right? If you're talking about more unique products, uh, which is a larger market than head product, uh, the what we call barcode item, it's, it's totally different. And uh, for example, we have about uh, 40,000 store uh, setting on our site, and each of them has a very unique product and unique service and unique use, user interface. So it's totally different, uh, but what we share is a very high level of the service mind. Every single merchant is very, have an extremely high level of uh, customer service mind. So, you know, they take care of the, of the customer very well. They are very responsive. They will ask, you know, basically answer to your question if you have. So I, I think um, including everything, uh, it's, it's totally different ex experience. I think it was two years ago you said uh, Japan is, is, uh, Japan is too, too, too small for us. We have to expand rapidly in other states, and if you have done that, and we are, you are active in China and the US, in France and Germany, is this the end of your international expansion strategy or just the beginning? What can we expect from you in the next two or three years? Well, it's just, uh, I think, the first phase. Uh, you know, we are going to keep expanding geographically. And also, we are going to increase our uh, service lineup. Uh, for example, uh, we just bought an ebook uh, company called Kobo. It's very global, even more global than Rakuten. You know, they are number one in Canada. You know, they are you know ahead of Kindle in France, uh, doing very well in uh, UK. They launched service in Germany. They are number one in Australia, New Zealand. Uh, so I think we would like to go into as many countries as possible. But the difference is we would like to localize our service. Just don't want to provide the standardized universal service all over the world because I think the uh, retail is local. So we create a shared platform, but we'll, we'll leave the room to localize our service. So that's the difference, I think. Your acquisition in, in Germany is a B2B startup called Tradoria, which is now a record in Germany. 
and many people expected a more an aggressive step in the German market because one of the largest e-commerce markets in the world. Um, will Tradoria be the, the only step in, in, the, in, in the German market or what can we expect from you in the, in the near future? Do you want to acquire some more companies in Germany? <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. Uh, but I think we, we like the Tradoria because it's a very, uh, although it's not so big at this moment, uh, it, it, we, we, you know, I started from two people uh, without raising any money. So I believe uh, they have a bit, very good platform, uh, very good culture, and the business model is very similar to Rakuten. So more than the big companies we acquired, like Play.com or Price Minister or Play.com, uh, the Buy.com, I think uh, Tradoria, now we changed the brand to Rakuten Germany, uh, has a more natural fit with us. And we know how to grow this model uh, very rapidly. We have done it, right? We started from zero. Now it's 14 billion uh, USD a year, and it's keep growing. So I think it's, it, this is a really good start for us. There are many Asian internet companies like Rakuten, Tencent, Baidu, Zina. They're all very, very large, but they are mostly large on their home market. Mm not in the, in the international competition, and uh, uh, they have some difficulties to, to um, um, challenge the, the international competition with global leaders like Google, Amazon, eBay, and so on. What do you think, what else, what is necessary for the Asian companies to be uh, successful on a global level? What will happen there in, in, the, in the global competition between the Asian companies and the, and the American companies? Well, you know, the, the companies you mentioned is almost all uh, Chinese companies other than us, right? So we are a little bit different. Uh, and uh, we are the service company. So in order to become successful uh, in other countries, I think we need to have a global mindset. And uh, we need to be able to manage the global service and global organization. And the biggest challenge uh, for, maybe this is true for a German company, but, uh, you know, Japanese company has been so homogeneous, right? You know, there are not so many uh, foreign executives uh, in the management and the engineers. You know, we don't speak other languages, including English. Uh, so I thought the thing we have been doing was I have been transferring expertise from one business to other in Japan from internet shopping to internet travel, internet travel to internet banking. Those services look different, but fundamentally, the business model is very similar. But because of the lack of global mindset and lack of ability to communicate in English, a Japanese company couldn't you know, grow outside of Japan for a uh, you know, very long time. Uh, so I think the first step is truly globalize the organization. Now we converted. Uh, this was a big dispute in Japan. Uh, I had, you know, we changed uh, the internal communication language from Japanese to English a year and a half ago. Uh, and everybody thought this is kind of crazy idea. But now we have seen this uh, massive, uh, you know, transfer of expertise. Uh, across the countries right now. So, you know, I, I think uh, we are getting there. I think Rakuten is the first Japanese company who changed the corporate language from Japanese to English. Yes. What has happened in your, in your company when you announced that? Was well, it a cultural shock for the company, for your, for your employees? Well, this is a big dispute in Japan. Uh, some of the CEOs of big companies attacked me. This guy must be crazy. He's wrong. Uh, and. Uh, you know, I don't know why they want to attack me, but <laughs> uh, so far, uh, you know, of course, some people are struggling, but they are working very hard. If you come to our cafeteria at 7 a.m., uh, you know, I think it's packed by all these people studying English. And uh, if you want to <laughs> really grow your business, you need to be able to communicate in English. Uh, and. Uh, I think uh, we are making a, a, a very good transition. Uh, I think uh, this is really, really uh, revolutionary, I think. Yeah, yeah. 
How many English learning employees do you have? Hmm? How many English learning employees do you have? English learning, everybody is learning English, yeah. uh, including myself, I suppose. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is the, uh, I think, uh, biggest challenge in this way in the history of Japan, right? We started from nowhere. Suddenly, I stood in front of uh, 7,000 employees and told them we are going to change the language from, to English, uh, from Japanese to English today. And they were kind of shocked. And, and uh, you know, but, uh, and, and at the same time, uh, they know I'm not going to change. So, <laughs> uh, and they are convinced, although they are struggling, they know this is the right thing to do. Uh, so motivation level is very high. Uh, one of the key drivers in, in global e-commerce is, I'm sure, mobile commerce. Mm. And is, is mobile commerce a, a competitive advantage for, for your company because Japan is one of the front runners in mobile? Yes, definitely. Already, Lakuten is the largest mobile commerce player in the world. Uh, we do about uh, 3 billion US dollars of transaction per year. And our smartphone business is growing about 700% year on year. 700? 700%. 700 uh, so it's growing extremely rapidly. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, in the future, uh, the mobile commerce will be more than 50% of our business, uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. More than 50%? That's impressive. Any questions from the audience to Mr. Bikitani? Yeah. yeah. One, wait for the, for the mic. Yes. Uh, I believe you are educated at Harvard, a, uh, a business school. Huh? Harvard Business School. Yeah. Yes. And so, how has that culture changed there? You know, and then going back to Japan, which culturally is very different and everything. How has that experience really shaped your growth and development in creating this company? Well, you know, what I have done so far is I have access to all these things happening all over the world through my network, uh, including my HBS alumni network. So I know what's going on. Right. I used to date Jenny Tao, by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> Charlie's wife. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I will keep it secret. <laughs> OK, anyway, uh, so uh, the, the original idea uh, actually didn't come from me. It came from my HBS friend, uh, uh, you know, uh, section mate. And by, I changed the business model so that it's going to fit to Japan. You know, he, of course, he's a shareholder of Rakuten. And uh, so that, in, in all this network, you know, uh, really helped me uh, to, you know, brush up my ideas and sharpen my thoughts. Uh, and definitely, it has been an advantage. And one of the reasons we are, why we are changing, uh, you know, uh, our internal language from Japanese to English, is I want every single employee of my company to have the same, you know, higher level perspective and see what's going on in the world, and then I think we can be a much much stronger organization. I think Charlie was working with you on language translation as well too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So he's on the board back again. Okay? <laughs> Okay, I think we're running out of time. Thank you very much for Thank being here and your insights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you.